Hello and welcome back and today I want to compare two five bay NASes. Now so many of you on this channel already know about the Synology DS1019 Plus. I've talked about it quite a lot and let's face it their bloody logos in the background Synology feature quite a lot on this channel but there's also this new NAS from the guys at Terramast. It's another five bay and it's significantly more affordable. And so many of you out there, when you're investing in your first NAS, be it for Plex, for business, for home, for backups, DLNA or more, are thinking about the right NAS for you. And once you see the price difference between them with this one, the Terramaster F5221 arriving at about 450 pounds, and that's including that without the hard drive media. And then you've got NASs like the Synology DS1019 Plus, which retails for about 680 that is an enormous price difference between these two NASs. So what we want to do today is figure out which one of these two is best for you. Not which is better overall because there's different scenarios, but I want to help you guys decide between these two NASs. So roll the start. <laughs> Right, so before I start telling you guys about what these two devices can do better than the other in different scenarios, it's worth mentioning what they both can do regardless, meaning that which way, whichever one of these two NASs you buy, you are going to get a NAS that is fantastically robust. It has to be said that as long a history as Synology has, the brand Terramaster I mention on this channel quite a lot for a simple reason, because they have somehow evolved faster than any other NAS brand in terms of length of time. Don't get me wrong, they've still got a few things they need to do to keep up with brands like Synology and QNAP in the big, big, big game. But it has to be said that in the last two to three years, they have evolved ridiculously fast. Now, both of these support Mac and Windows environments. Both of them support um, cloud-based access as well as network access. Both of them have got multiple LAN ports on the rear, and both of them are five bay NASs that support the very latest hard drives, such as, get ready for the plug, the Seagate Ironwolf series of drives. Now, Ironwolf are NAS-based hard drives, and notwithstanding that all of them arrive with, um, or particularly in newer models, um, you can get the Seagate Ironwolf Health Management, which gives you real-time checks and more in the background of your NAS hard drives. But on top of that, the Pro series of drives also arrive with rescue recovery, so data recovery services included for a couple of years, and five years of manufacturer's warranty. And they go up to 14 terabytes at the moment as well. So yes, it's a plug, but at the same time, it is a pretty bloody good drive. And both of these support these hard drives. So that means 14 terabyte hard drives on these RAID, RAID 5 and RAID 6 enabled NAS devices means an enormous amount of storage is going to be available to you. It's worth mentioning that both of them support scaled storage. That means you can put just one hard drive in either of these two devices and add drives as you go and then adapt to the RAID accordingly, which is pretty handy indeed. Both of them arrive with a whole host of first party and third party application support. But it should be mentioned that much like QNAP that I've mentioned on the channel before, the Terramaster NAS, NAS although it has quite a few good first party apps, it's, it has a greater support at this time for third party applications. With an application on there um, for everything from photo, music and file management, all the way through to Plex Media Server in third party and other third party apps that have been migrated over and a container station application too. Now the Synology platform DSM, so much bigger and better, don't get me wrong, it's expensive for a reason. Synology invests heavily in their software and it, it can pretty much do any of those software appliances but it also includes surveillance with its surveillance station platform and mobile applications. There's more mobile apps for the Synology too. Virtualization with its own first party virtual machine manager, its own container station application in Docker, Synology Office, Synology Chat, Synology Drive, Synology Moments, photo recognition, the works. You get better software on the Synology. Don't get me wrong, that price difference has probably made a huge dent on a number of you out there, but it has to be said that the software on the Synology is significantly better. And although both of these devices can do a number of key network attached storage applications for home and business, the Synology does all of them better. And that's where a lot of that money goes. Now, it's worth mentioning that the term better is relative. Because if you are a small home user, if you only have three to five users access in your NAS and you're not gonna be hitting this thing hard, then you're not gonna need that scope that the Synology presents to you. So if you're worried about the cost, 
but you heard what I just said about the software, do know that that is scalable. Now, in terms of scalability, it's worth mentioning that both of these do have very similar hardware, but the TerraMaster is available in two different versions at different prices. This, the F5221, arrives with a dual-core Intel CPU, the J3355, a very popular 2.0 GHz Intel-based CPU. Along with that, it arrives with 2 GB of DDR3 memory that can be upgraded to 8 GB. On the Synology, you've got a quad-core CPU. Now that quad core is the J3455 compared with the 3355 on the TerraMaster, and that quad core is 1.5 gigahertz that can be upgraded, uh, can be turboed, so boosted up to 2.5 gigahertz per core. It also arrives with 4 gig of DDR3 memory. So between these two, there is double the cores on that Synology NAS. Now it's worth mentioning that, as I say, there is another version of the TerraMaster, the F5421. Now that device arrives with the same quad core CPU, but it's gonna cost you 550 quid, so another 100 pounds. So you can see where some of the money went on the Synology NAS there. But it's worth highlighting that even though they both got the same internal hardware, they're very similar external hardware. <clears throat> both of them have got five um, hard drive base, as mentioned. If we go for the trays on the trays, it's plastic hard drive trays, and they are screwable designs, so you have to put screws there into the base of the drive to hold it in place, but it is a plastic tray. And on the front of the device, we can see LEDs there on the side that for real-time information, or indicators even, of hard drive access, network access, and system health, and a power button there on the bottom, no USB one-touch copy button. If we go to the rear of the device, we can see two cooling fans, Two LAN ports there on the rear, Don't not four, ignore those two extra ports there, you have to get the upgraded quad-core version to have those. You have two USB 3.0 ports and an HDMI port. Now that is interesting, because the idea that it arrives with an HDMI port is something that one, you'll never get on a Synology, but two, now it's treading on the toes of QNAP and Asus store. And remember, this is 450 quid compared with that NAS over there that was 670, 680, depending on where you shop around. Now there's ventilation on the bottom, that's worth mentioning as well, because once we move on to the Synology, we can see a completely different design rhetoric. I would argue that this Synology definitely looks better out of the two of them. For all of my love for the TerraMaster series, there's no denying that this looks better. It is bigger, it's definitely a bigger NAS overall, but it does seem to be nicer. They've both got uh, plastic chassis, but what I would argue is a TerraMaster one is a better combination of metal and plastic plastic throughout. You've got those five trays on the front, but these five trays are lockable. If you look there on the bottom, you can see those lockable trays there. The trays themselves are plastic in design. You've got screw holes for two and a half inch drives, but on top of that, you've got click and load design. So you can pull those clips out of the side and install three and a half inch hard drives with relative ease. But I know a number of you aren't too keen on plastic trays, but you're lumbered either way. You've also got a one touch USB copy button there. And I say one touch, you can use the software to set it up for USB backups automatically. And on top of that, you've got those same LEDs there to give you information about the system, the drives, the network, and more. And you can lock those trays accordingly. On the side, you've got the Synology logo, which is ventilation on the inside of the device. And on the rear, we have got two LAN ports, another USB 3 port, and the device can be expanded by another five drives with the DX517, it's about 300 quid expansion device. So that seems pretty interesting, they're very similar, there's no HDMI port on this, but I tell you what the 1019 does have, SSD cache ports. This is where you can install an NVMe SSD, and on these NVMe's, you can install these in the base of the device and that will give you an enormous speed boost of your internal read and write thanks to SSD caching. Now, the TerraMaster didn't have that feature. It didn't have the SSD caching base built into the base. It didn't have any base, NVMe or otherwise. But what you can do is install general two and a half inch hard drives or two and a half inch SSDs inside those available bays and then use the software to create cached areas with these drives. Now that's quite handy, don't get me wrong, but there's still no avoiding the fact that you are going to end up losing storage bays 
by installing those SSDs in there. The Synology has given you the option for SSD caching, but it has done it without losing any raw storage area. Now, both of them, I'm pleased to say, support the same top tier file system for me anyway, and that is BTRFS. That means you've got quicker background snapshots, you've got integrity checks on all of the data transmissions internally, and file self-healing. This is something that ext4 does not give you, or, or when it does give it to you, it does it at the expense of a lar large amount of system resources. Both of them, once they're utilized in Plex, will allow you to take advantage of transcoding, and both of them do feature 4K transcoding natively. But once again, it's worth mentioning that more powerful CPU in the DS1019 Plus will give greater results. So once again, that price difference of over 200 quid, there's a reason for that. Now, between these two devices, it has to be said that ultimately, if you're on a tight budget, there is very few reasons not to go for this. I've done a software overview of the TerraMaster software and it has come leaps and bounds. The latest version, TOS4, not only is heavily stylized from other NAS brands, including DSM, it is very fluid, very bright, and very fast. It is incredibly uh, reactive when you're using it. Something that QNAP could really stop and stare at this for, given that I believe they still use Java, whereas these are using HTML5. And they'll have to correct me on that. I had to ask Eddie the web guy more about that. That's his area. Um, but for the Synology, that 200 quid isn't something you're being screwed out of. I mean, for a start, it's a three year warranty on that and a two year warranty on the TerraMaster. With the Synology, you've got all of those incredible applications. And again, I, I didn't really focus enough on those. Synology chat, an alternative to Skype or WhatsApp in your home or office. Synology surveillance station, 8.2, with incredible business level surveillance technology behind it. You've got Synology Office, an alternative to Microsoft Office and Google Drops. You've got Synology Moments, an alternative to Google Photos. You've got Synology Drive, an alternative to Google Drive and Dropbox, that one portal access point. And, and you know, active backup sync, so you can back up multiple um, servers at once within one portal point, but it still comes down to that point. If you're not gonna use those things, if you don't have the facility in place to take advantage of that enormous software power, you are kind of wasting your money a bit because the TerraMaster software, hardware and more is still pretty bloody good. They've got a worldwide presence. They're available on more than just Amazon anymore. And in fact, the first time they featured on this channel, it was them sending me a unit for review. Since then, all the reviews that have followed have been of my own volition. I'm that impressed by this. Again, if I was in your shoes and I had an unlimited budget, I'd probably go for the Synology. But if I wasn't on an unlimited budget and money did matter, this is a damn fine NAS, and remember, for an extra 100 nicker, you've got the four LAN port model with the quad-core CPU that's the same as that, and four gig of memory. And that's really what it comes down to. I hate to say it, but it does kind of come down to price and what you're going to get for your money, because you both of these are excellent value. But what I would say is, if you don't have the money for that, this is still an incredible second place that definitely challenges both Synology and QNAP. And, um, you know, makes mint me of a couple, of, a couple of the bigger brands out there like Asus, Thorthicus, and even Drobo that we'll talk about in another video. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Do go in the link in the description to NAS Compare to learn more about these devices. And of course, do support this channel with your like, your subscription, and let me know on NAS Compares. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.